Hello and welcome to this learn video in the series of A-level biology for free lessons and today we're going to be covering transpiration and the cohesion tension theory. Make sure you have some paper as you go through and um, there's a few questions and quizzes that you might want to have a go at. So first of all, transpiration. Now this is a concept you would have learnt at GCSE. It's the loss of water vapour from the stomata and that is by evaporation. And this here is just demonstrating two guard cells which are turgid and therefore bent, creating this stoma or pore. And that's where the water vapour can evaporate out of. And you mainly find those on the leaf, in particular the lower side of the leaf. So next then is looking at the four key conditions which affect the rate. The four are light intensity, temperature, humidity and wind. So pause the video at this stage to see if you can describe the effect that each of those conditions would have on the rate of transpiration, but also explain why they have that effect. So light intensity is a positive correlation. So the higher the light intensity, the faster the rate of transpiration. The explanation is that as there's a higher light intensity, that causes more stomata to open. If you have more stomata open, you have a larger surface area in which water vapour can evaporate out of. Temperature, the higher it is, the faster the rate of transpiration. This time it's because if you add heat, then the water molecules will be gaining kinetic energy and therefore they'll be moving around faster and that will increase the rate of evaporation, which is transpiration. Humidity has a negative correlation. So the more humid the air is surrounding the leaf, the lower or the slower the rate of transpiration. And the explanation for this is, if you have more water vapour in the air, that will make the water potential in that air more positive compared to the inside of the leaf. And therefore you're reducing the water potential gradient and the ability for the water to evaporate out. Wind is the opposite idea. And this is why you have a positive correlation. The more windy it is, the faster the rate. And that's because wind or air movements will carry away the water vapor that is in the air surrounding the leaf. And if you don't have that saturated air anymore, you've maintained the water potential gradient and therefore more water can evaporate out. So that's transpiration. But the next idea is the cohesion tension theory. And this starts to go into how it's possible for water to evaporate out of these leaves, but then a whole column of water to move up to replace it against gravity. And for some plants, such as large trees, that could mean water is moving against gravity for several metres. So there must be some quite strong forces in play to enable that to happen. And this is what the cohesion tension theory explains. And it's a combination of cohesion, adhesion or capillarity, and root pressure. So we're going to go through each of those, starting with cohesion. And we need to think back to biological molecules when you learnt about the structure of water. So water is dipolar, and that means we have a slight negative, which is on the oxygen, and a slight positive region, which is on the two hydrogens. And because we've got these two different charged regions, the water molecules are able to form hydrogen bonds with each other. And those occur between the hydrogen and oxygen of different water molecules. And that's what these dashed lines are representing. The effect that has then is the water molecules stick together. And that's what we mean by cohesion. Cohesion is the sticking together of water molecules. The impact that has is that water will travel up the xylem as one continuous column. So instead of it moving up droplets at a time, it's one continuous column. So if you pull this water column from the top, the entire column will move up with it. Capillarity. So this is the idea of adhesion. Adhesion is when the water molecules 
can stick to the walls of the xylem. And the impact that has, I'm going to demonstrate with this analogy of drinking out of a straw. So we've got three options here of the diameter of straw. We've got the widest through to the narrowest. And when you put a straw into water, the liquid does move up. It doesn't just stop here where the straw starts. It does move up. And that's because when you put the straw into the water, adhesion is happening. The water molecules are sticking to the walls of the straw. And this one over on the right, the most narrow tube, the water is in, uh, more water is in contact with the walls of the straw. So therefore more of it can stick and actually moves further up the straw without you even sucking or drinking from the other end. So this will be happening in the xylem as well. Without even having any pull action from the top, the water will actually move up slightly because of adhesion. And the narrower the xylem is, the bigger the impact of capillarity. So a narrow xylem will help move water up. The last idea that we're going to add to this is root pressure. So as water moves into the roots by osmosis, you then have a larger volume of liquid, but in the same space. And this increases the pressure inside of the roots. And as a result, we get what's called positive pressure, which gives this push action. So as water moves into the roots, because there's now a higher pressure, it pushes any water above it further up. So you get this pushing upwards from the bottom of the water column. So those three ideas collectively, cohesion, sticking together with the water molecules, adhesion, the water molecules sticking to the wall of the xylem, and the positive root pressure, so the pushing up from the bottom, are all parts of explaining the cohesion tension theory. But we'll put those all together now and link it to um, the original question, how can we move water up a tree several metres against gravity? So step one, we said that water evaporates out of the stomata, which is what transpiration is. So here we have our water vapour evaporating. And that then means that there's a loss in water volume, creating a lower pressure in the space where the water evaporated from. As a result, water from the xylem moves up to take the place. And this is negative pressure. So because the pressure had decreased, we get this pulling action on the water column behind it. The next idea is this um, explanation of the water column. So this cohesion occurs between water molecules. So the water molecules stick together and that's because of the hydrogen bonds between them. So as the water is being pulled from the top, it all moves up as one continuous water column because all the molecules are stuck together. And not only that, we said that the water molecules also stick to the walls of the xylem. And the reason that helps is if you're pulling up that column and they can also stick to the walls along the way, it means they're less likely to fall back down due to the force of gravity. The last part then is this tension part of cohesion tension theory. And the tension is created by the pull from the top. So as that water is moving up or being pulled up to replace the water that's evaporated, that pull on the water column, which is attached to the walls of the xylem, draws in or pulls in the walls of the xylem. So you actually end up with a narrower xylem tube and therefore increasing the impact of capillarity even further. So in summary, transpiration is the loss of water vapor from the stomata. This is the evaporation and it mainly occurs um, on the leaves, which is where the stomata are. Temperature, light intensity, humidity and air movement all affect the rate. Cohesion, we said that is between water molecules and it creates a continuous water column in the xylem. Adhesion is the water molecules sticking to the wall of the xylem and that creates, creates the um, capillarity. And lastly is the idea of tension. So as the water vapour evaporates, it causes an upwards pull on the water column. 
This creates tension, pulls the xylem walls in, making their diameter narrower and thus increasing the action of capillarity even further. So collectively, that is the cohesion tension theory. So I hope this has helped you understand transpiration and the cohesion tension theory further. You might want to go on to one of the next learn videos on mass transports. Um, so you could look at how sucrose is transported on mass in a plant as well. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest videos that are added.